So you are back with the pastor and the professor. So over the break, we were having some uh, in-depth discussions about, in essence, what the state of hip-hop is today. So we're going to have some of our panelists chime in with their thoughts and reflections because the conversation was geared around this notion of what the glory years of hip-hop were or may be and comparing them to some of the current representations because some of our artists... Some of the artists have expressed this sort of tension between being authentic and unique and then, for lack of better terms, caving into the market for the sake of acceptability. And so when you start comparing time frames, you also compare artists, which reminds me of what one of the uh, audience members sent to our Facebook page who said that Kanye West said that he was on the plane scared as hell that a guy looked like Emmett Till. Mm -hmm. And even though this isn't as vulgar as Lil Wayne's line, does Kanye's line cross the line, and I'll also say, what is the line, or what is the state of hip-hop today? Anybody want to share some thoughts on that? Well, I, I think, I, and when we <coughs> talk about hip-hop, you know, when it came, where it came from and where it originated, you know, we got to look back to where it started, and to me, hip-hop is basically just whatever you feel it is to you. Um, you know, we, we, when the artists started doing hip-hop, it was more about the, the dance and the rhythm and, you know, it really wasn't a lyrical content that was uh, involved if you look back from the origins of hip hop. So now we 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 we, we kind of hold these artists to a standard. Well, it may not you know it may be people who don't want to hear uh, the conscious rap, the conscious rap, or the conscious artist. So I think the state of hip hop in in, in a sense now is is just basically about what people are demanding. We talked a little bit about that before. It's just people aren't demanding that that conscious hip hop, and I, that's that to me is uh, just basically where we are with that. And that, and that line about the the Kanye, um, I think Kanye was making a uh, comparison about his face and and, and that disfigurement. He was just from It's a different context. It really yeah. wasn't. Yeah. It was a different context. And um, you know, there is a line that cross artists should be held to certain uh, uh, standards. Uh, you know, when they're doing music, but you know, it's really about what you feel and what you. What you brought up and what your values are, you know, I think that's that's basically what centers around, you know, what you feel about hip hop. I got a question for you, artist. Um, you know, as far as black art and, and the biggest black art right now is hip hop music. Right, no if it, it's just defined no as black art, um, <clears throat> and, and being a, a lit man and a writer myself, I kind of get upset that there's so many black people always held to a different standard of what we expect from our artists. It's strange how some, you can look at actors all the way to entertainers, some people are respected. Um, Nicki Minaj flaunts her sexuality, she's demonized quite often. But Kim I was Kardashian watching Beyonce, fuck a Kim Kardashian, yeah. I'm talking about black people. Uh -huh. Beyonce does it and she's lauded like this new queen, this new major diva. Okay, I was watching her documentary, right? You know, most of her songs, even songs like I saw a song she was singing was a nice love song about making love to her man, her husband, but she was bent over on top of the piano, right? You know, so there's so many innuendos there and almost sexual blatancies, right? Right there. But as black people, we're always trying to hold our artists as if they're supposed to be our parents or our pastors or our teachers. And I'm wondering, how do you guys feel that you always, like, I think, Black artists can't get away with as much as white artists can. We can go back to Django. Some people say that a black um, director couldn't have done a Django, right? He couldn't have done a, um, a black slave liberating tale where there's a black uh, a hero that kills white people. How do you feel about being artists, particularly hip hop artists? Do you feel like you can't say necessarily what you want to say um, um, in your lyrics? For instance, um, Portnoy's Complaint, the whole bestseller uh, uh, novel, the whole piece is almost a, a psychological warped journey on the narrator talking about how he really would like to sleep with his mother, uh, envisioning his mother's periods, and we study this, her mm -hmm. menstrual cycle, mm -hmm. and we study this for English majors, any English majors in the house? Any? Any? None? They would know. But we study that, but then we have this, these lines in rap, and these particular rap artists are ostracized for what they say. How do you feel? Do you feel like it's, it's an unfair um, existence for the black artist? Mm, you want to go? I was just going to say, um, <clears throat> black artists in the past, it, weren't, it wasn't so watered down or it wasn't so many opinions and views. So the black community was looking to these artists, you know, for their inspiration and insight. And they were almost speaking for us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nowadays, it's, you got rappers and artists on every corner giving their opinion. So um, <laughs> you, got more, you got more people saying these things. So I think it's, it's more watered down now than it used to be in the, back in the day. 
you had one here, one here, one here, and mm-hmm. the whole black community was focused on those few people. So their opinions were were stronger and and more um, had carried more weight okay. back then. I okay. think in in some instances. You pretty much hit it right. Well, I was gonna say <laughs> but, but but don't you feel like you guys are a change? You're almost a re enslaved artist because you you got to worry about what you can and oh, cannot well, say. I I, I I say far as for me, you know. I don't give a fuck. Like I feel like I can say whatever. <laughs> That's I the say. <laughs> you know, I feel like I feel like I feel like, like, I, feel like I can say whatever I want to say and get away with it. But I know when to cross the line, when not to cross the line. Well, but that line moves though, doesn't but it? Does, but I but I have accountability in myself. For yourself, know, okay. What's For yourself. what's what's acceptable and what's totally crossing the what line. What you want to disseminate as an artist? You, you, there's certain things that you won't do. We, far as as far as you're saying, you know what it is. If there's a line, yeah, I mean, like I would, I mean, I, I, and why do you have a line? Period. Because again, it's about. I think it's a, it's all about accountability, and uh-huh. you know, there are people that are around me who, if I says um, said a certain thing, they'll probably slap me across my my back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You mean like with a whip? Well, not with a whip, but <laughs> is there but like you, a threshold that you think you can only go to to be successful as a yeah, artist? Which, yeah. Um, because mm. if you cross that line, oh, I'm, I probably won't be able. My single won't get. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know because sing. you know, a moral technique. <clears throat> is indeed uh-huh. one of my favorites, and this boy didn't cross every single bounty that there is, right. and um, but it but it goes about you know about if you're going for that or not. You know, um, I'm one of those, or you ain't got to put a muzzle on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to say how I, how I want to, when I want to, and how I want to. People, people produce art, at least in this, this consumer context, like you were talking about, <coughs> to become successful. Mm-hmm. Most I, I'm wondering, what, what is the standard of success? I know back in the day, you know, it used to be platinum albums. Well, with downloading and piracy and all that, you, you know, you're not going. So, 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 is there in the in the industry, the radio, you know, and, and the uh, you know, communications industry, is there a clear cut standard of what is and what is not successful, or is it just if you get five radio plays per day? They try to get them shows though, right? That's that's the that's the real money doing them shows. Mm-hmm. If you're touring, you're getting money. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's yeah. where a that, lot of the artists' money is. And made. it starts with them radio play. That's why you got to get on that radio to book some tours. Like you're yes. saying, the singles. That's why everybody's yeah. shooting for singles. Singles, no yeah. more albums. Like you watched Beyonce. Yeah, remember when she talked? Yeah, uh-huh. she spoke volumes. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she did. And I think she was taking a shot at Kelly. Go ahead. Kelly? <laughs> yeah, because you know Kelly. You know she says. Artists don't Come do on, albums bro. anymore. They just do, do hot singles, singles. singles. I'm thinking she's talking about everybody. And then after the everybody. single dies down, you nah, know, that, that, you pull it. You this pull it. This could be beat. some Earl Allen. No right? beef, and it's crazy <laughs> shit. Ain't no beef between them two. I think if anything, she might have been looking at her hug. She might have been taking aim at the rap community because, like she says, you know, she mentioned. She's a touring artist, yes. and uh, her and her husband, <clears throat> and she kept talking about that. So is and it, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I cut you off. So, so is this, you know, mm-hmm. what is the stand? Is there a standard, or is this just like an unwritten type? Of- I don't, I don't think that there's per se a standard as far as um, what's um, successful and what's not. I mean, it's just. It's so different these days mm-hmm. when we talk about radio play. Um, you know. Like right now, if there's an, an, a new artist that wants to be on the radio, if the program director listens to it, he doesn't like, he doesn't play it. But if if we have a hundred people calling mm-hmm. the station every day to listen to that single, yeah. he's forced to play it. It's like if there's a demand for something, it's gonna get played. So in essence, what we're hearing is not the invisible hand trying to force feed us stuff. It is in essence what we are asking for. Yeah, that's decadence. What we're asking for. Here's the thing. The, the reason I, I, I raise this is because, and Joanna and I talk about this all the time. So for anybody who thinks that the pastor and the professor agree on everything, you got the game twisted. Where'd they get that from? I don't, I don't know where they got it from. I can already tell y'all. Yeah. Oh, no, but, but this is what, you, you know, this is what fuels the good conversation. So, okay. so we, we, we've been going back and forth about this artist responsibility and accountability for years now. My thing is this. I do not believe in censorship. Just like as a pastor, I get up and do I say some vulgar stuff from time to time? Yes. Do I do it just for shock and awe? No. But I, I believe I ought to have the liberty to express what I need to express. Here's the thing, though. True to yourself. Right. But, but I, understand, I count the cost. So I know somebody may not invite me back, even if it's my home church, right? Well, I have to live with that. 
because I didn't get into it to be a superstar. But rappers and artists get into it to be superstars, and then they complain, uh, by and large, not everybody. But then the complaint is when you put something out and get held accountable. So Nelly swipes the card down the girl's butt, right? Mm -hmm. Never knowing that one day his sister would need some support because she's sick. But then the community is revolting against his, in their mind, false representation of female value. And then they don't support his stuff. His sister ends up dying. I, I think that that's tragic. But sometimes that's the, that's the response. That, that's the result of the art that you put out. So we want to be able to say, I beat it up like Emmett Till. But then nobody say, hey, man, you need to cut But Wayne up. isn't out. Wayne has not come <clears throat> out like he's upset about this. Number one, he could give, no. he doesn't give a damn because... Forty-three million dollars last year. Right. He hasn't responded at all. He hasn't responded at all. I no, think, he apologized. I think, right? No, Interscope did. Uh, who, who Future? I guess that's Future's label, right? Future Epic, did, Epic, right. Future. Epic, I think. Okay. But um, even Future was like he thought it was a dope line, dope verse, dope. I don't dope think Wayne balls. had any ill intent right. on the lyrics. Right. Okay. You know, it just—I think it got the attention of his family, of the and it was disrespectful what he said. Yeah. You know, but. It got the attention, and it's a lot of exposure going on right now about it. So Wayne may make a comment mm -hmm. eventually. Now, are you not going to buy his albums anymore because he said that one comment? Nah, probably, they probably who knows if they will or not. Yeah, I quit buying, like I say, after call to one. But <laughs> but uh, I think I got a question again. Another question. Once again, we're dealing with the responsibility and the culture of hip hop. There's almost a. Do y'all think there's a funny level of like an hierarchical structure of? You know, if you like this type of rap, you, you're intelligent. You know, like there's your mm -hmm. conscious rap, mm -hmm. and then there's your hood rap. And I think some people think they, you know, well, I don't listen to this, you know, or this is garbage, are. or how dare I would. And, 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 you know, like, it starts to kind of be a divisiveness within the rap, the hip-hop community or the black art community of what's, we can even look from how you look at Spike Lee's movies versus a Tyler Perry. We start to say, well, we don't listen to this type of music, um, this type of genre of rap, and that's ghetto or this, that, and the mm -hmm. other. And, and, and it, cr it creates division in the black community mm -hmm. when what's strange to me is I love Jay-Z. Hold to God, I love his lyrics. Mm -hmm. But all of, most of his dopest lyrics came from his narrative is the same. Even though he's gotten money, he still goes the back and tells case. you about mm -hmm. how he got that money off the block, which I don't necessarily believe because it's too many trap stars that have no records, basically. Mm -hmm. And they still made in their 20s and shit. And so that kind of bothers me. But you have in our community people, well, I don't listen to this. It's almost like we're further segregating ourselves. Like, okay, I'm uppity. And I listen to the conscious raps, your most deaths, your Talibs, right? And then if you listen to Gucci Man or whatever, you're almost demonized because it's if you don't have class. Right. Do you feel yeah. like that's a problem? Like, can't there be a mixture of both? Because I don't want to disrespect either. A lot of those guys' <laughs> bars I love just as much as I love a most deaf bar. Yeah. And, and I don't like it when people try to demonize certain of these guys because of the image they present. Yeah, I think, man, at the end of the day, um, whether, you know... <laughs> You Pharaoh, Pharaoh, or you Future, you know what I'm saying? At the, at the end of the day, but people got to understand that art is art, you know what I'm saying? And music, to me, is made in certain settings. Now, when you, when you go out, and so I know some of y'all probably club in here. I know I don't. But some of y'all probably club in here. Now, you go to a club, they ain't going to be banging no Tribe Call Quest no. in no club. You see what I'm saying? No. But no, but but you know what I'm saying? In essence, you know, I, I think music is made for certain settings now. Um, do I feel, do I personally listen to it? Some of it I do. You know what I'm saying? I think, you know, um, I think some of it I listen to, and, and, and therefore, one thing I've learned as an artist is I've learned to, to understand artists. And um, I think I think the problem sometimes that um, we as a people we don't understand hip hop, and um, I think we listen to it and we're fans of it, but it's it's, it's a totally different thing to un to, to totally understand it. And I think that's a lot of reasons why it gets uh, the flat that it gets because a lot of people just don't understand it. You you about to say something? Uh, well, I was um, yeah, I basically kind of summed it up, man. I think it's uh, it's kind of you have the choices between you know. Gangster rap, and then you got the conscious. You know, I listen to a little bit of both. I'm a fan of all because I'm a fan of music, and music in itself, like like the the track we just listened to, I, I've I've heard that track probably about five times, and probably five times we played it a couple <laughs> times. <laughs> but 
I'm sitting here bobbing my head because the beat is bobbing, beat. you know, and that's that's what gets me. And then that's what gets you, you know, a lot of times repetition on the radio, you know, you, you hear something so much that you like it. Mm-hmm. Well, Joy and repetition. You, know, you do, yeah. you know, and, and I, I have those times where, I, you know, I, I want to listen to a most deaf. I want to listen to uh, the Jay-Z. I want to listen to, and then I want to listen to... Uh, I want, to listen, I want to listen to the goddess. I want to listen to all that. You know, it just really depends on the Red, feeling. white, and blue. <laughs> so um, I think it's just about choices. It's like food. You know, you got you can go get the fast food if you want to. You know, you can kill yourself with it. Or you can, <laughs> you can search out the good things that, you know, are going to kind of, you know, uplift you if you want to. But it's all about how you were feeling at that particular time. But a quarter pound of cheese a week together. won't kill you. Not one kill you. week won't It won't kill, kill you. you. All right, look, we got, we got to cut and take uh, another break, but we're going to come right back. And this is just some real talk. We'll lead to some real action that's real righteous. Give it up for the pastor. Yeah. pastor. Yeah. I got a um, comment for you guys. Uh, 